The power of Polanski. Migration. There are many types of movement cycles out there. There is cyclic movement, periodic movement, and migration. Cyclic movement involves movements that start at home base and come back to the hearth. A type of cyclic movement is commuting. It is the journey from home to work and back again. An example of this would be going from your home to work at Wingstop and then coming back again. Another type of cyclic movement is nomadicism. For this, we interviewed a wing nomad, Troy Aikman. You know, man, I just go, I, I just follow the wings go. Like, it's my true path. Another type of movement is periodic movement, which involves a longer period of time away from home base. Migrant labor is an example of this. Many people move each year to the farm fields when it's ready for the crop harvest. Another example is transhumanins, a type of pastoral farming in which ranchers move livestock according to seasonal ability of pastures. It usually involves a longer period of residential relocation. Another type of periodic movement is military service. Let's just say B-dubs launch an attack on a wing stop. Many military members will be moved to bases near the border until B-dubs realizes it's bad and backs off. The last type of movement is migration, which is the permanent relocation across significant distances. International or external migration moves across country borders. Internal migration occurs when people move within country borders. An example of internal migration is when a wing stop opens in a new location inside its country's borders. Naturally, a lot of people will relocate near the wing stop to find jobs and better services, as well as delicious wings. There are two types of migration, forced and voluntary. Forced migration involves the imposition of authority on the choice of movement. Voluntary migration invo involves a migrant weighing their options and choosing their best option. The difference between these two isn't noticeable sometimes. Things like persecution and discrimination can intermix, and the distinction isn't always clear-cut. Ernst Ravenstein's laws of migration state that, one, the majority of migrants move short distances. Two, long-distance migrants move to big cities, and three, young adults migrate more. This model was an early example of the gravity model, which predicts the interaction between two places. There are many things that go into account when people migrate. We interviewed a farmer in this case. He used to be a worker for B-dubs and recently moved to a wing stop to work. You know, I used to work for B-dubs, but, you know, they were abusing my rights and it didn't pay me enough, so I came to Wingstop to get the good labor wage and conditions. Shut up, I'm going. Shut up. In this example, the push factors are the abuse of rights and low wages. The pull factors are the food labor wages and good conditions. When considering pull factors, distance decay comes into place. The farther the location is, the less likely the migrants would feel certain about moving there. When people migrate in a series of stages, it is known as step migration. It is when you move from a village, to a town, to a city, and finally to a metropolis. Not all migrants that move to major central locations actually get there. Often, there are intervening opportunities on the way. For example, Hyokir wants to go work at the Wingstep headquarters. On the way to the central location, he finds an open spot at a Wingstep location along the way and decides to stay there. When deciding to move, a person would consider areas that others have successfully prospered in. Let's say a certain Jopo wants to go work someplace else because his job at B-dubs isn't satisfying enough. He knows that his friend, Mr. McManaman, has a very solid job at the Wingstop location near Atomic Hot Road. He will probably move towards Mr. McManaman because he believes in his location. This is an example of kinship links. This creates the phenomenon of chain migration. When chain migration builds upon itself, it creates hordes of people swelling into new areas called immigrant waves. In regards to immigrant waves, it's important to look at ideas such as selective immigration as well as quotas. Let's say, for example, that a less developed country, like Liberia, gets a wing stop in its capital. Because of the pull factors associated with the deliciousness of wing stop, it's conceivable to believe that many millions of Liberians would move to the wing stop. As such, a government might place a Selective Immigration Act known as a quota on the region. A quota places a limit on the amount of people that can enter a certain area. In essence, it limits immigration. Thank you for watching this episode of The Power of Polanski. 
Today we've learned about the powerful implications of immigration, movement, and population. Just remember everybody, follow the golden rule. If we all follow the golden rule, we will all be golden. Now, <laughs> what is the golden rule? Follow your heart and follow the wing stops. Be a global citizen. And as always, go Wildcats. Yo, wing stop, 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 wing stop.